Welcome to the Geek Show Arcade, where we're exclusively for you. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That was good, Owen. Yeah, you that just was pulled really that good. Out? Just pulled that right out. We're exclusively mm-hmm. for you, dear listener. Hey, man, he pulled, true professional. He pulled <laughs> it out. It out. <laughs> Ooh, I see what you did there. Ah, uh, yeah. Seinfeld, Seinfeld deep cut right there. All right, uh, this is the Geek Show Arcade, where we talk about video games and video game-related things. Because, you know, we love video games. Let's uh, kick it off by introducing our panelists to my bottom. We have Owen. That's me. Owen's on the bottom. Owen's on the bottom. Comfortable. Um, You know what? Uh, Let's work that way. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. Path of least resistance. You know, it's where you're going to find me every time. Um, Follow me on Twitter, at TechnoOwen. Uh, friend me on friend me on Xbox at uh, Mortyth84. Play some Halo maybe if I ever check my friend requests. So there you go. He does yeah. it. Next to Jaren on the bottom. Next to Owen on the bottom, we have Jaren. I am Jaren. You can also find me on, on Twitter bottom. at Jaren. J a r r o n. I hope it survives so I can and on, and on cherish threads. my Here's username. The thing. And, on, and on threads, are you are you Jaron on threads too? I am Geronimo. Geronimo on threads. Go Here's give yeah. him a, go give him a follow, folks. He's only got two. He's lonely. Side note: Ouch. the thing about the thing about Twitter is, uh, it actually is much. It's it's up a lot in users and interactivity and things like that as much as we dunk on it and as much as we you know criticize it for all the terrible things that elon is doing to it its interaction quotient is up greatly over the last year so Mm. i don't think it's going anywhere you think so you think that's actually from from what he's done just from keeping it in the public eye i'm sure that's a factor for Mm. sure if they just make it ad free for three dollars a month I'd, I'd buy that. You'd think about that, huh? If the, yeah, if the verified would. meant something. I don't I'd... care. Oh. <laughs> the blue check is actually a turnoff to me. Yeah, it is now for sure. Yeah. I think James La- has one. Was it, was that you saying you'd do $3 as well, Lando? Or was that you saying, let me introduce myself already? Yeah, it's my turn. Okay. Oh, I'm Lando. I thought I was waiting for Tony to be like, hey, it's Lando. <laughs> you said it's That's your turn. Me. I was giving you your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, Man, it's me. It's Lando. That. That you can find me perfect. on Twitter where I where I yell into the void about political nonsense. At Landon Conover. <laughs> or you can find me on threads, Landon.conover. Which is Quite. not the one where you yell into the void. No, no, no. This Threads, the, I post, you know, help desk stuff, this, arcade yeah. type stuff. That's the that's the real place you want to go follow me. Because I figured if I'm there in Threads already and I'm stuck there, I signed the EULA, I'm just blah. They've already got it. I don't use it. Yeah. Got your soul. Yeah. Yep. And you we go. have a fearless leader, the hostess with the mostest. His name is Tony. Hey, that's me. Check me out on Twitter at Quad T Tony or on other Geek Show podcasts. Let's see. We got, uh, wait, first, do we have any emails? Nope. Uh-huh. Okay, moving along. We got some some interesting stuff to talk about. We have the death of the FTC versus Microsoft, and then the resurrection of the FTC versus Microsoft, and then the death again of the <laughs> FTC versus Microsoft. It's so a roller coaster, guys. Yeah, up and let's down, talk, up and down, up and down. Let's talk about that real quick. Jaron has that story. No, you? no, I don't. <laughs> Owen oh. has it. Oh, has can, that? I can get. I don't have it, but we can kind of discuss. So they appealed. We've talked about it. I kind of ran the last one. They talked about it. Uh, the FTC lost the not just lost, lost but like they lo- originally they lost, lost it. Lost. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to the point where to the point where the judge, lo- like it yeah. was em- it was an embarrassing loss. The judge fact, actually said, in uh, fact, if anything, the opposite was proved. <laughs> in, yep. in, yeah. fact, in fact, in fact. The head of the FTC was brought before Congress and asked why they did so crappy. Grilled. <laughs> Grilled. Why did you screw that up so much? Really? And I didn't hear was, that. Yes. And it was right after uh, she had put in the appeal. And mm-hmm. so not only was she grilled for how terrible the uh, last one went, but she was also grilled for why do you think that this appeal will go anywhere? Yeah. You are it wasting time and wasting mm-hmm. money. There, there's a three. Uh, there's like two or three two minutes, two minute video clips of it that I saw on Twitter, yeah. and they just rake her over yeah. the coals. Um, it's not pretty. They, they, they kick her while she's down, and, and the appeals comes up, and and 
everybody's like, it's back. Oh man, the headlines, the, the clickbait was like, it's back. That's not back. It's it's not over yet. The FTC's coming at him again, and and that's not how it went. Personally, I am against monopolies. You know, I want competition in the marketplace. Absolutely. This was the wrong thing to pursue. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yes, all the, not, but all this is Microsoft saw... being a monopoly. Microsoft buying Activision doesn't even make them top. No, I think they're. I think they're still number four or something in the industry of biggest game studios. Here's, even if they get Activision, this this uh, FT the head of F of the FTC right now. I, I can't remember her name, but sh this is the second or third attempt at uh, torpedoing large yep. acquisitions. And things like that because uh, the dollar signs are big. That's yeah. why she's going after these things. Uh, it seems, anyway. It seems that's why she's going after these things. Not because they're anti-consumer or whatever, but because I can make a name for myself. I can make the FTC right. look good if I bungle this large number up. Well, and public, and the bigger the deal, the more public opinions out there, right? Sure. The more public interest. And like politicians do... They want that when there's public interest, that's where that's where the action lies, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so here you see a big company possibly getting bigger and they're just like, oh, no, we got to do something about this because and it leads back to funding and lobbyists and their constituents who are basically, you know, getting misinformation, misinformation and then writing their congressperson or writing the FTC and, and pushing this. I, I just don't think they had a strong enough argument to begin with. And even no, if they, they did, did even if they, well, they, they possibly did have an argument. They just they went about it. Bungled so wrong. it. They didn't take that argument. They took the, why are you doing this to our buddy Sony? Mm -hmm. Like, what did you, what are you picking on Sony for? You know? <laughs> so, but yeah, so they, they appealed it and it got denied. So now it's finally dead. That's that, um, right? And that, that's and, that. In the U.S., that's that. That's yep. that's game over. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing left is CMA over in the United Kingdom, which is also backpedaling now. And they're yeah, they're basically saying, well, let's you know, we'll take another look at it. We'll let we'll let Microsoft uh, present to us some you know any new information they have or any you know different plans they have in place and, and it like seems that. like xbox is really trying to bend over backwards to make it so it isn't bad for consumers and it isn't antitrust or any that kind of nonsense like they're doing a lot of things to like say hey look yeah we're not gonna be be bad about this well yeah and just and just but yesterday jaren finally, has a story so, about that yeah just, well and just yesterday is am i stealing the story if i talk yep. about the deal oh, okay yep. go ahead go ahead jaren i want you to oh, talk about it oh okay uh <sighs> The Call of Worst Duty deal. Worst transition I've ever heard. Sorry. Yeah, not not there, great. There was Jared. there was an attempt for sure. It was really bad. Um, <laughs> rubs the sleep out of his eyes. Yeah, not great, Jared. <laughs> uh, anyway, this Call of Duty deal that has been oft quoted in the FTC stuff. Uh, it's finally been signed by Sony. <laughs> Sony yeah. didn't really have a choice at this time. At this yeah, point, exactly. But Sony basically got embarrassed and shamed into finally accepting a deal because Microsoft looks so generous by saying it's going to be on every platform, every PlayStation in perpetuity. New systems, not in like, perpetuity. It's a ten-year oh, deal. Oh, ten, ten years, oh, okay. which is. But even after so, ten years, Sony, like it's going to be so profitable for Microsoft to keep it on oh, yeah. Sony. Like, why wouldn't they? Here's the thing: ten years means. Uh, it will either continue to be a juggernaut or Sony has 10 years to build their own thing that they right. think can compete right. with it yeah. and uh, and go that route. One I thing mean, I could see Microsoft maybe doing, like what if there's another console generation like the Xbox 360 and PS3 where Microsoft just owned, you know? Maybe at that point, 10 years from now, they were like, oh, maybe we won't put it on Sony's platform. We don't need that. Yeah. Maybe. It is a slippery but like slope. I said, like I said, Sony's got... Point. Sony's got ten years to build something that they think will compete or do better. You know, if they you know, want. That's, yeah. a, that's an interesting slippery slope, though, that we brought up before. That you know, Call of Duty wasn't originally, or um, Minecraft wasn't on Sony because Sony didn't want to send on PS Five. It wasn't on yeah, PS Five. It it's on PS Four. Oh yeah, on PS Five. They didn't want to send dev kits to Microsoft because they were launching competing consoles in the same at the same time around mm -hmm. here for the same thing. And Microsoft has that unique position hmm. where they all, where they own the IP and they're also competing on the hardware front. 
And, you know, Sony's been doing that with for years with the Blu-ray player, which they yeah. own, and Blue Disc, or, um, and the, the, discs. Play, the discs too, which obviously are kind of obsolete now, but, um, I mean, I guess people still really like Blu-ray, but anyway, I, I wonder if that's going to be a thing in the future. Microsoft will always have a heads up about upcoming hardware if, if they continue to require Call of well, Duty to be released yeah, on day but one you, on their new hardware. You could say the same thing if, if Sony decided to release a new Uncharted game in multi-platform. Mm, true. <sighs> But they, you know. but they haven't though. <laughs> they like, they have. I see what you did, but, Tony. But if they wanted to, they could. Okay, yeah. well, let's take one that they do. Really the hung. only one that they do have multi-platform. MLB the Show. Okay, let's say uh, they release MLB the Show uh, into the future. They're, the year they're releasing it is the same year that Sony and Xbox are right. going to release new hardware. You know, they're in the same yeah. position. If Xbox wants MLB the Show to be on their platform. They have to provide the yeah. dev kits to the Sony-owned developer yeah. for that to happen. And I feel like that's a paradigm shift because, like you said, that's the one game you could that you could come up with from Sony. But Microsoft has many, several, that are, yeah, you know, that several that are that way. And so I think the paradigm shift is that that used to be the only way: exclusives, keeping your cards close to the chest, using mm. games to sell your consoles was the way. And Microsoft is pivoting faster than Sony in that way, and and so we'll have to see how that goes. Well, here's well, the the really interesting thing about this, if you ask me, is is you have Microsoft putting itself in a similar situation that Sega was in when they stopped making hardware mm -hmm. and went multi-platform with their publishing. Mm -hmm. That's dark times. Except, <laughs> except, Xbox is still making hardware. Right. And so they hold both pieces of the of the puzzle at the same time. You know, Yeah, access... they're they're still making hardware, but they're also branching off to other things like we've talked about it before, but on my frame TV, I can play Xbox Cloud games with an right. Xbox controller, right? Yeah. So like the console isn't the only way to play Xbox anymore. Oh, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure, or Xbox sure. Cloud on my computer. Yeah. So I like, like I hope they keep like... making hardware for sure. They will. But they're 100%. definitely like branching out well it, it makes sense to keep single player games platform exclusive right like these Set. life service games that make it break in a ton of money it, it makes, makes sense that they'll always be cross-platform agreed yeah sega would have, and sega would have succeeded the same way microsoft is if they would have had the internet and the ability to to stream and do the same thing that microsoft is doing now dreamcast had the internet it, it was, was ahead of its time it did it did have it the did. internet mm -hmm. sorry jaron i think technology <sighs> wrong time made, Technology has finally made that a viable option to go yeah. game only, you know, like game studio only. There was a really interesting uh, section in the latest Digital Foundry Direct where they talked about uh, Sega and uh, what happened because a bunch of uh, Sega of America papers got leaked over the last uh, couple weeks. Did you see, did you see this yet, Jaron? Yeah, it's on my list of uh, articles, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, let's well let's let's talk about that. Yeah, because this is fascinating. Uh, the the short version of it is it looks like uh, Sega of America is what killed Sega hardware. <laughs> oh, yeah. what a bummer! <laughs> yeah, the, the the release of the Saturn was so weird at the time. It was supposed to come out in the fall, and then like six months early, I think it was in May or June. They suddenly released it out. Surprise release to the world, with hardly any games because no one was expecting oh, so, this. Yeah, like writing <laughs> on the wall. Somebody knew. Somebody was trying to recoup some costs here, right at the end. And well, so the, it was this surprise release of a console with pretty much no games. Of course, it it's not going to go well. All they did, and they it was almost a paper release because it was unavailable in a lot of regions still, even though they said available everywhere. You know available in these yeah. markets and so in japan sega was actually doing well it was mm -hmm. outselling the playstation at first um and uh their response was and i quote wish i could get our staff salespeople, retailers analysts media etc to see and understand what's happening in japan they would then understand why we will win here in the u.s <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Well, so the biggest yeah. one of the biggest problems with the Sega Saturn was uh, it was originally designed to be basically the ultimate 2D gaming machine. And 
it was in for all intents and purposes 2d gaming on that machine is at the time and even even later on just the best very very good at that but they realized too late in the hardware development cycle that uh 3d was the 3D next was thing. the way to go and, uh, and it was so, just too hard to develop for compared well, to the PlayStation. So what they did was they shoehorned a second CPU onto the board and uh, basically uh, had a hardware revision late in their hardware production and their hardware uh, you know, development to try and accommodate for 3D mm. games. And nobody knew how to develop for it for right. two CPUs and to split it up, you know, split up the processing between the two CPUs and everything. So uh, it took a long no time. Game releases, right? Yeah, it took a long time for games to start coming out that, that supported 3D. And even then, they just weren't very good. And when you had the PlayStation coming out that did 2D and 3D, um, it just kicked their butts. You know? And if you look at the marketing the spend of Sony versus uh, Saturn, of Sony versus Sega, $40 million from Sony, $18 million from oh, Sega. Oh, yep, Ooh, that'll do yeah. it. Hmm. And I think the Saturn was more expensive, if I remember correctly yeah. as well. So, yep. so, the Saturn, so the Saturn was the was the console killer for Sega? That's what ended it It was, for and, and, and uh, John Linneman on Digital Foundry. No, it was, sorry, it was Rich Ledbetter, the old guy on Digital Foundry. Uh, I mean, Elder Statesman on Digital Foundry. That sounds um, ageist. I, I fixed <laughs> Elder, it. I fixed Elder it. Statesman, yeah. <laughs> um, so he well, was, at the time, he was working in gaming magazines, um, and I think he wrote for Sega's, one of Sega's gaming, like an exclusive Sega gaming magazine. He had a Japanese version of the Dreamcast in Europe and was going around to... Um, Dreamcast or Saturn? Dreamcast. So this is after the Saturn. So he had a, he had a, a an advanced hardware release of the Dreamcast in Europe because it came out in the in Japan first. And for his articles, he would go around to gaming stores and let hook it up and let people play it and get their reaction on on what they thought of it. Right. And he said he he would hook it up and they would play uh, like Virtual Fighter Three and mm, uh, you know some of those early games that looked better than anything on the market mm -hmm. like way better than anything the playstation had than anything that was on n64 and he said the people would say wow that's that's really cool and he would ask him so are you are is this something that you think you'd want to get when it comes out here and he said almost every time eh, nah i'm probably gonna wait and see what the playstation 2 has mm. <laughs> every time which is wow. which which is so compelling to see how how you know i'm impactful your first launches right mm -hmm. i think that the steam deck 2 will have a lot of people that are going to be super interested in that because their launch went really well yeah you know and so it it's going to get you back for the sequel yeah we were a sega family we had the master system which was the nes competitor we had the genesis we had a dreamcast everything but the saturn and i remember at the time just thinking oh it'd be so cool to have a saturn but it's freaking expensive, and yeah. Sonic isn't on it. And uh, yeah. no Sonic, we'll, ne we'll never get it. <laughs> that was a that Gotta was a C, was that a CD system, the Saturn CD, or yeah. was that yeah, it, was a yeah. it was a CD? Well, that was the other problem that Sega did. Sega of America had was they made all these add-ons to the Genesis that didn't go anywhere. The 32X complete Sega CD 32X complete yep. failure, and they were all supposed to bolt on to the Genesis and create the Tower of Power, you know. But they they were they just weren't that good. They didn't sell well. The developers didn't produce uh, much content for them, and so uh, they invested all this money into R and D and manufacturing of the hardware because you can't sell it if you don't have it, you know. So yeah. they, and that was another piece that's in these in these uh, uh, papers is how much inventory they had on hand. And it was absurd. It was like 250,000 Sega 32Xs on hand. And they Crazy. had to just take these huge write-downs on these on this yeah. stagnant. They just had to dump the there was there's a, there's a landfill somewhere with just full of those. Probably. Probably. There was so much goodwill from the PlayStation that the Dreamcast just didn't stand a chance. Like The Dreamcast was a great system at the time. It had amazing games. But people, like what Tony said, they were just waiting for the PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. And it's and so, then, 
it's so wild to think about that because Sega had 20 years of name recognition yeah. before yeah. Sony PlayStation came out. But the PlayStation yeah, Sony, came out. Sony had name recognition. Came out was yeah, awesome, but, though, right? But yeah, but PlayStation, the the amount of uh, buzz that the PlayStation got is just wild. It's marketing. Name Ask recognition, James. instantaneous name recognition. There were yeah. There was people that didn't say I'm going to play Nintendo anymore, which that's what right. you used to call it. I'm going to yeah. go play Nintendo, even though it didn't matter what system you were what playing. System, yeah. I'm going to go play Nintendo. Now yeah. and for a while after that, it was PlayStation. I'm going to go by PlayStation, you know. And that's what you saw referred to in the media. Oh, my kids are in the other room playing PlayStation on sitcoms and stuff like that. You know, like yeah, it's weird. It's weird to think about. There was a, there's a reality in which Nintendo and Sony teamed up to make the PlayStation. Yeah. Right. Well, that was know, that. I mean, that's crazy to think about. That almost happened. So, so what happened uh, with with Sega is they had to merge Sega of America with Sega of Japan uh, during the. I think it was either right before or during the Dreamcast uh, era, and Sega of America's financials were so bad. Ooh, it tanked Sega of that's Japan. That's basically what killed Sega as a whole. Was oh, Sega that's of a America's, poison pill. Yep. They had to swallow a poison pill, and that cost Oof. them the company, as far as hardware goes. Right. Hmm. Mm. It still, still hurts made, today. You look it so still sad. <laughs> they've, made, they've, <laughs> made a bunch, they've made a bunch reselling Sonic and their IP. I mean, they've oh, they're doing fine now. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, right. No yeah, but no pivot. one is no one is passionate about you know uh, just a no, publishing I, company. No. no. I think well, I that's think not Sega. True. That's not true. Let's Hideo talk about Microsoft Kojima. more. People are people are passionate about Kojima Productions. Well, that's a person. That's that's not a company. True. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. <sighs> are they still create? They're not creating new IP, are they? Sega. They're, Sega. Yeah, uh, they're, are they, I thought they're just milking their old classic. Um, they're doing new Sega, stuff, right? They have when to I think be. of Sega, when I think of Sega, I think of them just like. Classic isn't, systems or arcades or emulators. Isn't or, Yakuza Sega? That's yeah, pretty huge. Yeah, but that's been around for a long time. I mean, they're on and game isn't, like eight. Isn't Atlas also Sega? Did Sega buy Atlas? Or maybe Atlas just publishes through Sega? I don't know. Hmm. I thought Atlas was independent. Who owns Parent Atlas? organization is Sega. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. There okay, you go. so so yeah, I mean they're yeah, like I said, they're not they're not hurting. They're not um, gone, right? No, by not yeah. by any stretch. They're... Yeah, and, and Sonic Frontiers did really well for them as well. So you think Microsoft has to keep creating hardware to stay relevant? You think you think they'd go the way of Sega, like if software only, and lose that kind of relevance? Uh, no, I don't, I don't, my could, understanding they is they, they lose wanted. money on every single Xbox sold. Like they're not yeah. making Xboxes to make money. They absolutely could if they wanted, but I don't think they want to. They mm. they like having that presence in the living room. It's that a that would yeah. give right? Sony yeah. no competition. Yeah, yeah, it that'd really be weird. Would. Yeah, yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, and they I, want that. They want that access, right? They want to lower the barrier of entry to get to the system. You don't have to have great PC. You don't have to. Yeah, because that's browsing thing. That's it, the difference. Is they would have to hope that people want to keep buying their games on PC, mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, just hope that people had good enough PCs to play their games. Right. Uh, they'd publish on Sony at that point too, but. Um, yeah. Then you're, you're subject choice, to the, you're like, then you're subject to the whims of whatever Sony decides to put in their hardware. You know, right. you don't have any say on any of that. Well, like, what so, if yeah. you love what if you love Mac OS or whatever, but you also want a game? You're like, well, if I have to pick one, I'm going to get a laptop that I like to use. You know, mm -hmm. so the console solves that. Yep. Cool. There you go. That that was that was interesting. All that's old papers from the '90s. Just how did they leak? Out of there. They just. Found well, in a trash bin. They do you know, were going do you know what office? this was, Jaren? Uh, it was on the Sega Retro Wiki. So the guy that runs the Sega Retro Wiki, and this was this was all talked about in the uh, Digital Foundry Direct for this week. Um, apparently, bought them off someone like ten years ago for four hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, ten really? years ago? Wow. He waited ten He's, years. He sat on them for like ten years. And going then, through his office, and he's like, or or maybe he kicked it, and he's, his kids were going like, "What's this? Let's publish it." Yeah, so I I don't know what made him decide to do it now, but I'm glad he did. A lot of interesting info yeah. in there. Very very yeah. interesting. Past stuff. the statute of limitations. Yeah, that's maybe that's what it was. He's decided. Okay, it's been <laughs> so long enough. Get, I don't think anyone's gonna hurt me. Can't can't get sued for this. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jaron, I got something else for you to cry over. Um, no, Baldur's, I can't take it. Baldur's Gate three. 
you were complaining about how long it was going to be and that you wouldn't be able to play it because it was too long. Well, just a little salt in the wound. Uh, it has 17,000 different endings. What? <laughs> no, I'm out. I'm so out. I <laughs> too can't many. That. Dude, I, I couldn't many. handle Metro Exodus with the two I'll, different endings. I'll feel I'll feel compelled to do those. Seventeen thousand variations. So no way. How uh, big a variation, though? I mean, that's the question. How you know? There's probably. I mean, I'm speculating here, but there's probably I don't know twenty very major different endings. You prob- they probably just ruined a, do- a dozen people's lives that are going <laughs> right? to do all of those that- and actually will. Well, we talked and we talked about this in the past, uh, I think a couple, three or four episodes ago. So Larian has said that they have 174 hours of cinematics in this game. Holy cow. Just cinematics. That's a movie and a half. A movie and a half, 174 hours. That is... That's a lot of movies and a half. That is, uh, yeah, that's 50 or 60 movies. Ooh. And a half. And a half. And a half, yeah. 22 different subclasses that you can play as. I was rounding up. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, this game looks like it's going to be absolutely massive. Um, the 17,000 number is more just kind of, you know, funny and a way to say that uh, right. tiny variations in maybe the epilogue's writing, you know, like, because right. you made this one, you did this one quest a certain way. and it'll But just somebody say, is going to be compelled to, to go get... figure out and <laughs> do all of those, you know, yep. and, note, and note every single change. 17,000 variations of, of the ending. Uh, but uh, game's coming out soon, so you can start working towards grinding out those endings. August 3rd, that's only a couple weeks away. Jaren, how will you know if you got the best ending, though? See, that's the question. Which one is the best? You know what? That girl did not deserve that teddy bear. Oh, man. I she, can't believe you. She can. She lives in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. And all, all she, she had was that teddy bear, and you it's wouldn't all go left get it for of, her. It's all left of her, of her Childhood. humanity, dude. Humanity. You know, my kids make toys out of paper, okay? <laughs> she she can handle paper. it. There's no paper. Sticks. <laughs> no. Radioactive sticks. <laughs> Make but a, it was a make real a bear out of those sticks. Genuine teddy bear from the before times. Yeah, you know. And you didn't go get it for her. Man, I went and got it. I you probably didn't it. even get that guy's I, guitar either, did you? I went and got him. No, and then I no, couldn't I find support the girl. That. So oh, I went and got the teddy bear, but I never gave it to her because <laughs> I couldn't find her again. You're like, wait a minute. I like this. I'm keeping like, it. <laughs> keep this, this is my teddy bear now, kid. <laughs> give it my pillow. Now it's my pillow. Give me that teddy bear, kid. Yeah. Uh, there you go. All right, let's see. Uh, Owen, let's talk about they. This surprised me. Let's talk about PlayStation Plus's July lineup because yeah, so I it's don't actually really good. Yeah, it actually, I, I guess these games are good. I don't play a lot of PlayStation, so we got some. We got a few games. If you if you have the PlayStation this, Plus, you get some free games, right? This is the lowest tier. This isn't even like yeah, the mid the or free, higher tier. Right? This is not not free. Oh, this okay. is if you pay for multiplayer. This is the very base tier, that, so you can play multiplayer yeah. on your PlayStation. So, so there's so many Call of Duties. I don't know which ones are which anymore, but we have Call of Duty, Black Ops, uh, Black Ops Co- Cold War, Black Ops Cold War. That's the Alan, one that came out last, year, like 2021. Yeah, Alan Wake remastered. That makes me think of Jaren for some reason. Do you like Alan Wake, Jaren? I do like Alan Wake. There I beat goes. it last year, and the remastered version came out right yeah. after I beat it, which made me really upset. <laughs> nice. That one's only been out for about Classic. a year as well. Yeah, and yeah. then they have uh, End Endling, Extinction is Forever. So I don't know what that is. I don't even know. What I don't know if they're. I put those on here because I always forget to go check for the free games. Um, I, I, if you also, if you have prime, you can get some free games, uh, yep. through there. And I always forget to go check those. Uh, so I, when I saw the story, I thought I'd put that out there, but I don't know if these games are any good. Cause I don't, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't really follow these. So I'm, I rely on you guys to tell me what no, you they, think of the games. They actually are, uh, black ops, cold war, uh, single player. If you like the call of duty, single player games, I mean, that's classic big spectacle is, this, is it a sneaky game gun because that's one of your that's in your vein is it is the no call of duty is definitely not a sneaky game oh, okay. <laughs> but alan wake you can do some sneaking in um i played the original what like i i played it way late i think i played it like 10 years ago and it already been out for four years when i played it it's really cool hmm. the sounds in alan wake are scary Creepy. not so much the game but the yeah. the sound design the atmosphere really 
They did right. a really good job with atmosphere in that game. Uh, let's see, Lando. Speaking of <gasps> speaking of game services, uh, pour one out for Xbox Gold. Right? Yeah, Xbox Gold. They're they're getting rid of Xbox Gold. It's been around for as long as I can remember, right? This is the, the subscription service that would allow you to basically play multiplayer. So, I mean, yep. it's one of those things I was subscribed to for years and years and years, which is about thinking about it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, with the new, with the new um, Xbox Game Pass prices update, they've also introduced a new um, Game Pass that's going to replace uh, Xbox Gold. This is called Xbox Game Pass Core. Um, so, that's the new way you'll play multiplayer games. And you get... A curated selection of 25 games to play, um, kind of a subset of the Game Pass games to play on Xbox yeah. Core. So, anyway, they it's it, interesting. They keep, they keep it in line with the 60 bucks a year, right? That you got for gold. Yeah, so you, I, it's, it's a little bit more. It's the service will cost ten dollars a month. Or so, yeah, 60 bucks a year. Yeah, they give you a big discount if you sign up for the whole year. Like yeah. that's 50 percent off, basically. Yeah, if yeah. You pay for the year up front. So if, you, if you're a current Xbox Live Gold subscriber, you will automatically convert on over to Game Pass Core. On when? September 14th, the oh, launch okay. title lineup is Among Us, Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Horizon Horizon, uh, for Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Grounded, Halo 5, Guardians, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade, I don't know how to say that word, Sacrifice. Um, thank you. Humans Fall, Flat, uh, Inside Ori and the Will of the Wisp, which is a very good game. Um, Psychonauts 2, State of Decay 2, and The Elder Scrolls Online, Something Unlimited. Say it, Jared. That Tamriel. is a... Tamriel? Tamriel. Tamriel. That is a very go. good selection of games right there. It, it is. is. Like, yeah. For, for 10 bucks a month, that's a good selection of games. And they're going to add more, they say, two or, two or three curated, times a year. Right? They'll add yeah. more, too. Yeah, curated. So they'll, they'll come in and out and swap out. Yeah. But I bet they you things like... That. Like there, there will be some staples. I bet like Halo is a staple, always that'll, there, yeah, kind of a thing. Right. There, yeah. If I were yeah. to guess. So anyway, I just you know, Xbox Gold has been around forever. I have tons of free games because of Xbox Gold, and you know it's kind of go, it's kind of it sad. Was the, it was kind of the the beginning, right? It was the precursor to Game Pass. It's it's the yeah. It was the subscription elder, service. Uh, you you had to pay for Xbox Gold to get to play the online game to play multiplayer. To play on, yeah, yeah. It's online elder, elder statesman, right? Am I right? Ah, more tenured, more tenured employee. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the other thing that's kind of cool is um, anything you had redeemed previously that was an Xbox 360 game through Games with Gold is, uh, if you sign up for this, is uh, tied to your account for life now. You don't have yeah. to be continually. Talk um, about getting it right on that front. Yeah, you don't have to be continually subscribed for the 360 games anymore. They'll just be part of your account now. Now, for the Xbox One games... So you, you got, own them now? You own them now, yeah. Oh, yeah. sweet. That's pretty but cool. The, X, the Xbox One games will still be contingent upon you maintaining your, your membership, right? So, um, But there was something else that was weird about this that I, can't, I couldn't quite figure out. Um, and it was something to do with actual online multiplayer... That wasn't available in paragraph three. Paragraph three. I'm sure it's there. Well, no, it's not in this article, and and it was one of those things that's uh, really weird. They they had this weird way so, of saying please, it. Please stand by while we listen to Google or Tony Google's the Googles. He'll he'll no, find I, it, guys. He'll I find it. He'll get it. there. If, Here well, it comes. We'll, we'll come back to it in the Anybody meantime. Anybody have a story they want to tell in the meantime? Uh, yeah, in the meantime. This is riveting content. Let me talk, Landon. <laughs> Sorry, don't. I can resist. Mute him. Mute him. I agree. It's, mute him. It's a. It's this is a mutiny. That's when you mute him. A mutiny. I like yeah. that. Uh, that's that's good. All right, Jaron, tell us about Frameworks new Framework 16 that actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, we mentioned like this a so couple much. of months ago on the Gadget Spot. Yeah. Uh, Framework is a laptop company that makes modular laptops. So supposedly you can buy a model in the year 2023 and still use the same laptop in the year 2026, but with upgraded internals. Oh, um, no. Well, they've been around for three years now, and they've <laughs> kept good on their promises so far. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they have released a modular gaming laptop. It's called the Laptop 16, and the pre-orders go live today. 
um, the DIY version, meaning they just send you the parts and you build it yourself. Start out at $1,400 if you want a GPU in there, $1,700. But if you want them to build it, then it goes uh, up to $1,800 or $2,100. So anyway, oh. right now they don't have any, any NVIDIA GPUs, which don't is die, don't disappointing. Okay. Only yeah. AMD. Um, Man. Which, which one is it, Tony? The 7700S? 7700S, yeah. yeah. Yep. Which is a good GPU. Is that good? I get, mean, put, yeah. compare that. I only know. It's, I only know it's, Nvidia. It's so, fine. Com, so give me a comparison. So I translate I like, it to a thirty ninety. Nvidia. No, oh. I think they said that it's a hundred hundred watt. Like a twenty sixty. It would be uh, the seventy seven hundred S would probably land right in the thirty seventy laptop. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. 30, it's not 60, bad. Thirty sixty. If you don't 30, care 70, about. I mean, I don't know anything about driver's cards, but I know that's good. It won't have as good of ray tracing capabilities, and it obviously won't support DLSS. Yeah, games aren't as optimized towards them either, right? Like, Uh, NVIDIA owns that, do you think? No, it's not that they're not optimized as good. It's just that NVIDIA has uh, better hardware for handling things like ray tracing. They do it better. Who wore it better? And uh, it it, it won't have frame generation, obviously, you know, DLSS 3. So on these framework laptops... Can you swap out the screen? Because I feel yeah. like that's the technology yeah. that's changing the fastest, right? You can. Oh, wow. Screen and, screen the, and charging. like The options. screen it does come with is a 16-inch 2560 by 1600. 165 re- hertz refresh rate, 1500 to 1 contrast ratio, and 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. So it's a fairly yeah. good screen. Is, um, I think it's got high, high uh, brightness, too. I think it's 500 nit. 500 nits. So it's a, it's a solid screen. That's it's a good not screen. an... It's not an OLED screen, but there's really no laptops today that have a good OLED gaming screen out there. But when they do, you'll be able to swap to it. Yeah, exactly. Supposedly, they'll, yeah. They'll, they're, they're, they say everything, not everything, but they try to make everything cross, you know, cross compatible. So it is. It is a free sync screen, and the way that you upgrade the internals, it's really cool. You can even replace the keyboard with like an RGB keyboard. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have like a st- Dream Deck like thing you can attach to it, but like the keyboard just plops on magnetically, which is awesome. You could just like take it out within a, a minute. You don't yeah. have to like un- unscrew things necessarily. Um, Easily extremely battery. Yeah, I can just imagine like it taking a spill though and falling apart like Legos and just being like clatter no. all over the floor. <laughs> that, that will. <laughs> I really don't think that'll be a problem. No, that there's there's definitely screws in it. <laughs> yeah. It's a solid looking laptop. I'm very excited for this. If this had an NVIDIA GPU, I would might consider it. I honestly, I, I would as well because I like the AMD CPU options that they're putting in there. Mm-hmm. And if I if they offered it with like a 4070, like a 125 watt 4070 with boost after that, like that's still not top tier 4070. That's like uh, upper mid. I I would consider that. Because yeah, like being able to upgrade my laptop, that's that's a dream. Yeah. It'd be like my desktop but in laptop form. Yep. Ooh. All this right. I the, found uh, framework framework runs uh what's his name? Linus really promotes them, right? He's a, yeah, he invested he's an investor, in, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't have like controlling interest or anything like that. Right. But yeah, he, he invested a really small he, amount. He, he invested uh a quarter million. Yeah. I thought it was a so, hundred thousand. No, two fifty. Yeah, even then that's a really small amount for a company. Yeah. Hmm. Take that. You found what now? Uh, the, what I was looking for with the Game Pass stuff. So so oh. here's, here's where it's weird. So you have, there are now four different types of Game Pass you can get. There's Game Pass Core, Game Pass Console, Game Pass PC, and Game oh Pass gosh. Ultimate. All right? So That's the, confusing. The problem here is Game Pass Core is the $10 a month. You get online console multiplayer you get the catalog of uh of games that we mentioned and you get access to the members deals and discounts okay 9.99 a month now game pass console you get the access to the library with hundreds of games on the console you get uh new games on day one like like we've been used to with game pass and you get access to the members deals and discounts notice i didn't say online console multiplayer it's not in there weird 
You it have to pay to, for both? You have to pay for Ultimate if you want console multiplayer and access to everything. And that's $17 a month. Weird. Wow. But with that, you also get PC? access to PC with that Ultimate. And now with PC, PC, as we all know, multiplayer is free. There's no you know bar right. of entry unless you're playing a subscription game. So with multiplayer, you get all the same stuff as console for nine ninety nine a month. You get access to the library, new games on day one, member deals and discounts. Oh, and access to EA Play membership games as well, which you don't get on console. So, so that they've they've really muddied the waters with this, with Bizarre. the core versus console versus ultimate, as far as just using it on an Xbox goes. So yeah, I. Uh, I can't say that I think they did a good job there. It's hmm. it's confusing now. So, but no, know, know that if you want to play games online, you're going to have to get Core or Ultimate if you want to play games on your Xbox Online. Hmm. So. Crazy. Hmm. Anyway, there we go. Uh, let's see. I think uh, is there anything else we want to hit on real quick, or shall we wrap it up? Uh, Black Panther game was announced. A little bit late on this, but could be interesting. It's de- developed by EA. It's a brand new studio called Cliffhanger Games. It's going yeah. to be a third-person action adventure. So, yeah. Oh, Something we'll, to look yeah. out at. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. That looks interesting. And you know what? I'm going to squeeze this in real quick, too, because it's the same kind of uh, concept. I shouldn't be excited for this, but I kind of am a little bit. There is a new game coming out. <laughs> It's free to play. It's on iOS and Android, but it's Invincible Guarding the Globe. It's a game in the Invincible universe, if you're familiar with that, which is Uh really awesome. So there's a trailer out for that right now. Um, I I put a link to it in the show notes, and uh, hopefully the game doesn't suck. Even if the game is average, I will probably download it and play it and, uh, and get some enjoyment out of it because I just love that universe. The Invincible universe is really, really cool. So, there you go. Hmm. That looks great. Actually. Indeed, the you you watch the trailer and 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 yeah. it's like, hey, this looks as good as the cartoon. Yeah, like it looks really good actually. From from a at least from a cinematic perspective, I don't know how the game actually plays because that's of course all they show you is the cinematics right. in this trailer. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for downloading us. Thanks for making it to the end. This has been Geek Show Arcade. And we appreciate you. And you know who else we extra appreciate is our Patreon backers, which Jaron has for us right now. Patreon.com slash Gadget Spot. If you donate $6 a month or more, you get a shout-out on the Geek Show Arcade and the Geek Show Help Desk. This is the arcade shout-out, though. Thank you to David Roshinsky, Connor Kesaw, Aaron Young, Stuart Lloyd, and Wiffleball Tony. Thanks to Mark Cope, Blade Runner isn't worth watching more than once. Andy Bird. Be the eight year old, King Knight, King Bishop three, no name, no color, Caslow, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz, Nathan Motzkus, Matt Nelson. Y'all should check out Hendrix Craftsman on Instant TikTok. Me, speechless like a Japanese video game, dot dot dot. Josh Dorius, Dick Messerly, Splinter, Adam, Aaron Faulkner, Joe, learn like you are going to live forever. Ryan M and Adam Hecht. All right. Thank you so much, Patreon backers. Okay, we will see you next week. Until then, Owen, take us out. Hey, we hope you care.